What's up guys? Today I've got my hands on a Shulu XR1 Max. Now I'm actually quite excited about this one. This is the world's tiniest AMD Ryzen 7 mini PC. It has plenty of connectivity, power and performance to run any AAA games at low settings and also run any software from desktop publishing to video editing. This thing can handle it all. Now the XR1 Max is priced quite reasonably and this one comes in at around £320. Now first of all, quick look at what you get inside the box. So you're getting a quick start guide. So you can see there it says the smallest Ryzen based PC in the world. And you can see the complete series of the XR1 here. So you've got the Lite Pro and Max. The Lite is a Ryzen 3, then you've got Ryzen 5, and then the top model is the Ryzen 7. Um, you've also got a whole bunch of colors that you can choose from. Here you have a quick start guide and you've also got some stickers to go with that. Also included is a very high quality braided HDMI cable. You're also getting a rather nice compact power supply and I'll give you a close up of the voltage information. And last but certainly not least, the mini PC itself. And there's a rather nice bonus in this package, the good quality zip up hard case. And inside you can keep all your bits and pieces nice and neat, great for traveling with. Okay, so let's just quickly run through the specs. Now this mini PC is powered by the AMD Ryzen 7 5800U. This is an octa-core clocked at 1.9 gigahertz base and up to 4.4 gigahertz turbo with a typical TDP going up to 65 watts. For graphics, we have the integrated AMD Raiden Vega 8. We've got 16 gigs of LPDDR4 RAM and that can be upgraded to a maximum of 64 gigs. We've got 500 gigabyte M.2 NVMe SSD, which can also be upgraded to two terabytes max. We've got Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2 and a gigabit LAN. This mini PC has three USB 3 ports, three USB 2 ports, and we've got a Type-C port. You do get Windows 11 Professional pre-installed and ready to use. This mini PC supports triple 4K display output. We've got two HDMI 2.1 ports and one USB-C. For cooling, we have a rather large cooling fan with heat sink and heat pipe. And this mini PC does support up to 4K 60 Hertz. Now this is indeed a very small compact mini PC. And in case you're wondering, it's 8.8 centimeters in width, 9.6 centimeters in depth, and 6.35 centimeters in height. This thing has two-tone colors, so I've selected the black and blue color, and there is also a small LCD display. We've got ventilation on top, and you can actually see a large cooling fan in the center. There is a physical power button over here. At the bottom, we've got a USB 3 port, USB 2 port, we've got a headphone jack, and a Type-C port. On the side, we just have ventilation at the bottom. At the back of the unit, we have a large vent, power socket, gigabit LAN. We've got two HDMI 2.1s, two more USB 3 ports, and then two more USB 2 ports. And on this side, another small vent at the bottom. And that brings us back to the front. And here is a quick look at the bottom of the mini PC. So this is Windows 11 Professional, offering you a full PC experience in a compact size. The system is powerful enough to run all your regular Windows applications and games, including the Windows App Store, so you can go ahead and download all your favorite games and apps. Let's check out system properties. AMD Ryzen 7 5800U with Radeon graphics, 1.9 gigahertz, installed RAM, 16 gigs, 15.4 usable, 64-bit operating system. We've got Windows 11 Professional. And if I click on activation, you can see it's activated and ready to use. So quick look at system storage. We have a one terabyte drive, 951 gigabytes are actually usable. And from that, we've got 904 gigs free to use. So I've not installed anything yet. This is what you're gonna begin with. Now the second drive you are seeing is my 64 gig flash drive, which contains all my 4K samples, which is exactly what we're gonna be testing now. So let's go ahead and play some 4K video samples from a USB drive and see how this system handles it. So starting off with high bitrate jellyfish demo. First one is 160 megabits per second. And you can see it's playing back fine with no issues at all. No sweat. Let's try the next one. 180 megabits per second. Again, playing back super smooth. I can't fault it. So the real test now, 400 megabits per second. Let's see if this thing can handle it. All right, it started off a little bit stuttery. It smoothed itself out a bit. It is, it's doing the job, but it's not super smooth, guys. 
there is a little slight stutter if you look carefully. So this is a 4K sample at 60 FPS with HDR and you can see the video is playing back. Nice. Now this second video clip is a 4K clip with HDR10 and it plays back super smooth and looks great. So all of these 4K videos from USB, different file names and HDR formats all work fine straight out of the box using the default media player. So I didn't even have to download any codecs for this to work. So I just played a whole bunch of 4K 60 videos with various HDR formats and they all worked fine with no issues using the default media player. So I didn't even have to download any codecs to make this work. Now moving on to some video streaming on YouTube and this does support 4K 60 with HDR and streaming quality and performance is top notch. Looks great, contrast and colors look amazing. Now let's go ahead and play a few more trailers. A new day is dawning. She was called the Redeemer. It was said this child would stop the madness of war. <gasps> oh, Re-entry systems ready. Wait, 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 no, no. This ain't what you want. This ain't what you want. So next I tested Netflix from the web browser and as you can see, 4K streaming is supported. All right, so time for the gaming test. The first game we're gonna play is GTA 5. So let's get it open. So the next game we're playing is GTA 5. The game appears to be playing quite well. Resolution 1080p, graphics set to high. Yeah, we're achieving around 38 to 40 frames per second. And it's pretty good. But then the game is about 10 years old, so you would think most mini PCs can run this game. You can even bump this up to very high, but it will drop the frame rate down to around 35 frames per second. So I think the sweet point is high. You, or you could even play at 720p and get much better frame rates. So that was GTA 5. All right, so WWE 2K22, resolution 1080p, V-Sync off. Okay, model quality standard, shadows, I'm switching them off. Low quality, audience density can be switched down to about 50%, I think that's fair. Depth of field and motion blur is off. So these are the lowest settings that I would consider for this game. And that is what we're gonna need in order to play this. All right, so it looks like we're achieving close to 60 frames per second. 29 watt TDP, it's actually peaking at 30 watts. And the gameplay is actually not bad. So it's on low, but this is what you're gonna to have to do if you wanna play this game. Good reverse. Oh, look up there. The house with the weather vane. Right, here we go. Right above the market. Wow. Yes. 15 the frames per amazing. second. 20 frames per second if you're lucky. That's uh, not very good. Let me just do something. Okay, resolution optimizer. I think we're going to have to go to ultra performance. We want performance, right? So ultra performance, resume. Okay. So I guess it looks okay. And it doesn't look the best to be honest. 22 frames per second, 23 frames per second. It's playable though. It's uh, fairly smooth in operation. I'm just going the wrong way on purpose. Just because I've got more space around here to explore. So yeah, on average about 20 frames per second when we're moving around. This game is quite graphically intense. So I guess this is what you guys can expect if you're planning on playing this game on this mini PC. Uh, 20 frames per second. I wonder what would happen if I drop it down to 720p. Let's just try it anyway. So screen resolution, we're dropping it down to 720p. Okay, apply resolution. Confirm. Yeah, let's go, let's have a look. So 38 frames per second. So the frame rate has shot up a little bit. 
anything above 30 frames per second is decent for a mini PC I guess um, the fact that you're able to play this game on this mini PC is quite incredible Rashes and combs from Firenze try them my lady why not change your hairstyle thank you but I like it like this oh huh? good for okay. you a woman's hair is her righteous crown so Call of Duty Cold War graphic settings resolution 1080p graphics is of course set to the lowest okay so we're playing Call of Duty Cold War um, 1080p resolution graphics has been toned right down to low um, expectation is also quite low let's see what happens okay, so <laughs> already I'm I'm probably gonna die straight away it's super laggy I can't even move wow it's latency lag I died straight away and I didn't even take one step forward okay that's me I'm moving let's hide behind here it's so damn laggy I can't believe it look at this unplayable guys unplayable sit rep Okay, so next game we're playing is Undisputed Boxing. I've got it set on 720p and overall quality, I'm switching it down to low. So with Wi-Fi, we've achieved download speeds of 287 and upload speeds of 60 megabits per second. Now I'm going to do the same Wi-Fi test on my iPhone 14 Pro connected to the same wireless network. So here we go. Top speeds are around 500. I know this is peak time, so it's hard to achieve that full 500, but look at that. The iPhone managed to get close to 466 megabits per second. I think it's going to be about 60 megabits per second upload. So that brings us to our benchmarks beginning with Geekbench single core score of 1960 and multi core score of 7457. And in the Antutu benchmark test, we achieved 644K. So let's see how that compares with the others. So here is my top performing mini PC chart for 2023, allowing you to compare the price, specs and features. And the ranking is based on overall benchmark scores. So looking at Antutu, Geekbench and Passmark, the Shulu XR1 Max has achieved position 5 on this chart. Now you can view the full versions of all my charts online at chickstech.com and read them at your leisure. So there you have it guys, that was the Shulu XR1 Max, another premium compact mini PC. And this model has taken the word mini to another level. It's half the size of a regular mini PC that I usually review on this channel, but with no compromise. It has decent cooling system with cooling fan. It has lots of connectivity, which includes six USB ports, two HDMI ports, Type-C port, and a gigabit LAN. A major plus point is the ability to upgrade the RAM and SSD in the future. Performance wise, it's pretty good for everyday tasks like web browsing, office applications, coding, graphics, and even 4K video editing is possible on this system. Nice, affordable mini PC for school, college, uni. It takes up minimal space. Processor is quite powerful. And gaming wise, I was able to play more or less any new AAA game at ideally 720p resolution and low graphic settings. Windows 11 Pro comes pre-installed and activated and ready to use, which is great. You have triple display output if you need it. For the price, performance and design, this is a pretty good deal. Shulu XR1 Max people, let me know your thoughts. That's all for this video. Don't forget to like and sub and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.